Hi, this is a tutorial on retopologizing in ZBrush using Zebra Mesher. So, I like to use ZBrush for producing polygon on models from time to time because it has some great tools that are really useful for getting a poly count out. So, I've made this shoe in Maya, and basically, I've masked out the areas that I want to dedicate the most polygons to and I've done this by pressing control which highlights the yellow circle and mask and just drawing it on and then control and alt to subtract the mask so clean it up so the next thing I do is duplicate this this is because later if I need to project any detail from the low poly from the high poly sorry to the low poly I can use the high poly model later on. So I'm just going to double click on this so this eye is here and I'm going to go down to poly groups and group mask and that will group the area that I did mask and if you have polyframe enabled which is here you will see different colours which is just a visual to show you that has worked. So then I would go to geometry and freeze groups. So this is freezing the groups that I've just made, freezing the border, and I would target the polygon count. So this is a trial and error situation. It's going to vary for every model and it's something that you're just going to have to like play with, figure out along the way. Um, if if it is something you can struggle with, you can half it. You can do the same, or you can double it. So if you are a short fire, you can use these to make it just a little bit easier. But this is a lot more control. So I'm going to set it to just about one, and I'm going to hit Z rematch. So sometimes when you do freeze borders or groups, it does have a little bit of messy geometry. So I'm just going to untape this and freeze the border, which will freeze the border of the mesh. And I'm going to hit this again. And that is a lot better. I'm just going to lower it a little bit more and repeat that process. I forgot to lower the plug out now. Okay, so when I'm happy, uh, this is probably still a little bit too high, but I don't want to lose too much detail, so I'm going to class this as what I'm happy with. Uh, actually, I might just lower it a little bit more. That's maybe too much. There, okay. So... Now I want to sort of project a little bit more detail from the high poly. So this needs to be here and this here. And I'm going to come down to project. This is another trial and error. These settings sometimes work as they are and sometimes don't. So I'm just going to press and have a look. So it's a little bit messy, so I'm just going to go up one subdivision, and that might be a little too high, I'm going to undo that. Because this is going into game, I can't be too precious about it, if it was a standalone model, or like something you're getting close up to, I'd put more detail in it, and that would, I'll just show you how how I do that uh, quickly. This and this with the eyes, the eyes need to be turned on and I hit project all. I then look at this and determine if there's enough detail and go to geometry, divide, back here, enable this but make sure this is the primary one. 
and project again and it's put the detail back into oh here we are sorry put the detail back in to a fair amount you could also use normals to put the detail in as well like these lines here could be bump maps um, and you could use X normals to bake from high to low but like I said this is something that's going into a game it's not something that you get overly close to so I need it to be low poly for this so I'm just going to quickly remesh this back Okay, so once I'm happy, I also want to UV this, so it's near enough symmetrical, so I could use the symmetry as well for this wrapping. So I'm going to go to Z plugin, you can also move this out here and put this here so it's easier to find and navigate I'm going to go to UV Master and I'm going to just try symmetry to just show you how this works and unwrap so it will show you a little progress bar I'm not sure if my video has clicked that but it shows you that to show you the process and then click flatten you can then see the UV sheet and if you're happy you can export that. Um, I'm just going to, oh sorry, I'm just going to unflatten, go back because I clicked the map when I was in flatten mode and turn symmetry off. Now earlier when I showed you polygroups you can also use this for the UV. So if you want these areas to be certain, like split on the UV sheet, you can put them into a color group and it will split them, otherwise it will do it all flat that like you just see. So if you want an area specific, you can select it using the mask. This is going to be quite messy because it's low poly. And see if I can run um, out a little bit. Um, you can spend more time on this when you do it. I'm just giving you a quick example. Um, turn this on. Polygroups. Group mask. I'll show you what's done it. And then I'm going to take the mask off by pressing Control and dragging in the background. I'm going to enable polygroups and unwrap, flatten. Now you can see it's taken all these areas and split them up. So I would say that's probably not what I want. It's a bit messy and it would probably be a lot cleaner doing the UVs by hand. I'm going to unflatten. I'm going to turn polygroups off and just see what it does on, on its own accord. So yeah, the um, symmetry and the flatten are the same. So as you can see, it's a very flat surface. This does work for certain meshes and it can be great for a very quick UV process if you're like crunch for time and you just can't spend a massive amount of time on hand UVing an object or if it's a really complex object and you're still learning the UV process you can come and use ZBrush and have a look how ZBrush would unwrap it and use it for 
your models. But obviously it all depends on how much like detail you need in your UV sheet and exactly how you want to texture your material. Um, for this shoe, um, it was probably quite difficult to to do as you can see here's like the base of where I've highlighted. I think this might be the front and this might be the bottom. Uh, I, I can't tell. So it is quite difficult if I was to hand paint this map here. I would find it quite difficult to know which areas to paint and obviously it's splitting off these areas and that makes it quite difficult to get a very nice smooth texture so again it depends what you're texturing how you're texturing and the detail that's going into it but the UV in ZBrush can be really great for like characters or like big props and it can be used for anything really depending on what you need it for so I'm just going to unflatten this and come back okay so that's just a very basic rundown of a method I use for lowering the poly count sometimes in ZBrush and UVing in ZBrush um, just note that every model is different and ZBrush is going to react to different models in different ways so it's very much experimenting and don't worry about things happening wrong that's just how it goes sometimes um, just another thing there is a another tool for remeshing if I just go back to my first one and turn it off. So if this was something that I was getting close to in game and I really wanted all the detail there, I could use a decimate tool. So this is another tool in ZBrush that lowers the poly count but it triangulates the mesh. So if you want a clean wireframe for your portfolio or you know, it's it's something that you don't want in your models, then Z remesh is probably a better process. But this is great. So I'm going to pre process the current. And again these tools are all trial and error, just have a go, see what happens. And then I'm gonna click decimate. So as you can see it's triangulated, let me just go, it's triangulated the mesh so it's kept the detail but it has added those triangles and these can be smoothed in Maya um, and it does look okay in engines but it depends on again how you're using it and how you want your model to be displayed and these tools just to change the quality and polygons so yeah lower the poly count and then decimate and here I've put it very low so that's really made it messy so like I said it's, it's a lot of just trying things out and um, yeah that's, that's decent and if you go here you can see it's lowered body count drastically now but there is far more detail here than here so if you have a high poly character and you want to get it like into engine but you don't want to lose the detail or like after you projected your model um, after like surgery meshing it and it's still very high you can use then decimate to lower the poly count but keep the detail um, and that's, that's about everything really so thank you for watching